Hello, DevOps people. Welcome to Full Stack Live on this nice little Ruby Tuesday. I hope you are doing well. All's good here in Full Stack Live City. It's uh, been a rainy morning, and of course, now that I'm I'm going to be stuck for uh, two for two for two hours in in my uh, little home office here, the sun's coming out and it's getting warm outside. Well, I'll have to deal with that, I guess, and uh, maybe um, I'll make use of it later by doing a little run again. I haven't done a run in quite a while. And uh, yeah, so how is everyone? Let's make this show an interactive one. And uh, so pop into chat, share what you're doing at the moment, uh, what it is you're trying to distract yourself from by watching the stream, or if you actually want to learn something. Um, I'm not really sure um, uh, if that's going to happen, but uh, I'll do my very best. And if you have any questions, pop into chat and let me know. Share what you'd like to know, share what you're doing, share how the weather is in your neck of the woods. Um, let's make this a two-way street. Fudesnabel, welcome. Uh, happy to have you here. It's it's nice to have you here. Uh, as long as I don't overflow, I don't think so. I, I just uh, went to the bathroom earlier, so um, that shouldn't be a problem. Today, I'm going to continue what I did uh, last Friday afternoon, which is uh, doing a little work on my Twitch um, chatbot. Uh, that's quite fun, uh, uh, I, I uh, realized. Uh, because it's um, easy to code and on the other hand it really uh, gets my gears grinding um, in, in terms of object-oriented design and uh, so it's not just cookie cutter stuff as it often is when you're doing web development or working on existing code where you're doing little things here and little things there but nothing too challenging. Um, I think uh, building this from scratch and um, deciding for myself how I do the object-oriented design um, is a lot of fun. It um, takes a little bit more time but um, uh, I think it's uh, much more interesting than just doing road stuff. Exegetio, hello, 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 hello. Uh, another DevOps person, uh, another regular. Happy to have you here. Okay, so... Um, yeah. I don't think I have anything... I, I always keep saying that, that I don't have anything to share, and then I can still think of uh, things that... Uh, I can share. Let me think what ha what happened over the weekend. Uh, it was a it was a nice, cozy weekend. Um, kids are both on holidays now, so um, I really need to carve out my focus time, and uh, that's why I um, uh, booked the co-working space, a desk at the co-working space uh, for Thursday, because that's going to be hopefully a day where I can fully focus on my stuff. Um, well, um, in terms of what I'll be building from scratch, um, I, we are not building something from scratch uh, per se, but um, I'm uh, building out my uh, Twitch chat bot and um, adding new classes and things like that. That's what I meant by building it from scratch. It's not just creating another model in a Rails application or things like that, where it's all variations of a very well-known theme, um, but um, something that I have to design and uh, think uh, through by myself. I'm sad to hear that your weekend wasn't too good. Uh, you probably are referring to the the uh, po political developments in the US. I'm not really sure. Something personal or something more national. If you'd like to share that. Sunny weekend, last two days, bits really pouring down. Well, that's that's the better timing, I think, isn't it? Uh, Fuller's novel. Um, having uh, time off during nice weather and when you have to get back to your 
desk and monitor and keyboard, um, the weather doesn't really matter. In, I mean, oftentimes it's like like it is for me now. I couldn't go outside in the morning because it poured and uh, now that I'm sitting in here, um, part of me wants to go outside. Um, but uh, I'm quite happy that uh, I've managed to do another to start another stream on time, so um, don't worry, I'm not going to run away anytime soon. Okay. Oh, I do love thunderstorms. I do love thunderstorms. That's the one thing I don't like about the moderate weather over here in Ireland. Um, while it's really great that the winter doesn't get too cold, it almost never reaches zero degrees or below and it's uh, quite moderate in the summer as well uh, people uh, start talking of a heat wave when it just uh, reaches 25 degrees celsius so um that's very nice i i don't like it too hot because i can't sleep at night if it's still 28 degrees or something like you have in spain for example or in, in parts of the us as well and um i really don't enjoy slipping around in the winter and uh having to watch uh, uh, out for for um, uh, black ice and things like that. So that's quite nice. But the one thing I'm really, really missing is thunderstorms. Uh, if you want to get me feeling cozy, uh, you need to get me somewhere where there are thunderstorms and a nice cozy blanket and maybe uh, a nice little drink. And uh, oh, oh dear, uh, even even just thinking about it makes, makes it... Uh, uh, a dream to think of. There's a monsoon season where you are. So a, a, a very rainy, downpoury season. Is, is that it? I have the same strategy for the snobble. Um, uh, I uh, in, in the past I have been using a, an app called Nature Space with with really high quality nature recordings, and uh, I especially bought one of the recordings um, that they made from uh, a small little hut uh, in the middle of nowhere during a thunderstorm. Um, a rainstorm and oh, that was so relaxing um, just the other day I tried to find it again but it seems to have been lost and I haven't uh, found where I could maybe restore my purchases or something like that so I really have to to look that up and, and find out where it is because uh, that's a, an instant knockout for me it, it works better than, than milk with honey Oh, I see. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, it's is it because uh, of the, of the height as well, or because of the uh, um, mountainy terrain that uh, clouds keep getting stuck where you are and uh, rain down instead of um, passing by. Oh, and that's a great idea as well. I do have the, um, what's it called, dark noise app on my iPhone, uh, where I can also do these kinds of uh, noise mixes. And uh, sometimes I simply use um, uh, something like pink noise or something. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, I, for example, for working, uh, I really enjoy working to coffee shop uh, atmosphere with people talking unintelligibly in, in the background, um, but uh, mixing a thunderstorm and maybe a crackling fire, that sounds, that sounds great as well. Okay, so yeah, my, my geography is, is terrible. I have no idea um, where Arizona is uh, re uh, as relative to California, but uh, yeah, of course, Gulf of Mexico, um, uh, bringing uh, warm, humid uh, air, full of water. Uh, yeah, I, I can imagine that that uh, provides you with quite a little bit of precipitation. The app I'm using is uh, Dark Noise, yeah. 
They have all kinds of different background noises from coffee shops to babbling, bab babbling brooks. Yeah, and I, I, I know what you mean for this novel. Um, the, the actual noise types like uh, white noise, pink noise, brown noise. Uh, not sure if there are even more than that. I, I would have to look, look it up. Is there blue noise, actually? Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, quite interesting as well. From yeah, but since um, I um, just recently set up my my new microphone here and uh, uh, try to uh, set up an, an equalizer and things like that, now that I'm more familiar with all these frequency bands, and uh, um, it's it's much easier to understand <laughs> how these different noises are distributed across the frequency band. Yes, there is a brown noise, and uh, isn't it actually um, is is there uh, isn't there a myth that uh, brown noise actually makes you uh, crap your pants or something like that? Didn't happen for me though. Let me see if, if the link that you sent is the right one, but I, it definitely does look like it. Yeah, that's it. It's $10, but uh, it's very well made, a nice interface. The, the person or people behind it are, are great developers. So... Oh, the brown note. There's a difference between the brown note and the brown note. Okay. That's definitely something that I look up as well, because uh, I, I wonder um, what the amplitude of that sound needs to be for, for a causing actual bodily reactions. Would that be a great laxative as well? Wouldn't that be something that would have a, a medical application? Well, uh, we are completely off track, so um, I guess it's a good idea to get coding. So, here we are. Um, uh, on, on Friday, I built this shoutout handler um, where we uh, receive user messages um, and only react if they are a registered streamer. And this uh, registration logic is what I'm going to build out today. And um, so it doesn't react to people who are not registered as a streamer. And um, if they are a streamer, we need to make sure they don't get a shout out every time they write something in chat. But there needs to be some kind of a cooldown. And uh, only if this um, cooldown is off, um, then we'll actually send a shout out. And then we'll update that we've uh, when we've last seen them, which is exactly now, because that will then um, start the next cooldown period. And uh, I'll definitely need to um, extend the shoutout message itself, but uh, it'll do for the time being. We'll really have to first um, test if this actually works. And... Um, so far, so good. That module is more or less done, um, except for the shout out, maybe. And uh, maybe we will uh, eventually even integrate the uh, Twitch API to um, get the, the last stream they did and, and integrate that into the shout out as well. But um, let's. Um, let's. Uh, add the necessary functionality, which is um, actually um, maintaining my list of uh, streamer friends. It's a unique system. I know this. Hey, 22. Welcome to Full Stack Live. Nice to have you here. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, We'll add a new handler, and this and this time it's not just an event handler like this shoutout handler that reacts to stuff. Um, we'll actually add a new command to our bot, um, and I call that the streamer command. 
Um, that's what this command also will be called. So it's the streamer command handler. It'll work most likely very similar to my plan um, command. So let's copy this. Um, of course, we'll need to uh, make this the streamer command handler. It'll handle user messages. If they are a command, and uh, one of these commands is the one of the command aliases. Um, at the moment, we'll just use the command streamer. So exclamation mark streamer is going to be the uh, um, command that I'm going to use. And uh, then we'll actually Let's call this handle command. That way it's going to be more generic and uh, easier, to, easier to copy and paste. So handle command will uh, get the subcommand. We, we are going to have two subcommands this time. Um, one is add and the other one is going to be um, uh, remove rm, I guess. Um, if update allowed, mm, we'll call it uh, authorized, I'd say. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's try the rename command in NeoVim again, even though I think uh, it failed last time I used it because of um, limitations, but we'll see. So uh, instead of update allowed, we simply say authorized. And at the moment, uh, I think it's just going to be hard coded. Oh, it, see, it didn't even it didn't even uh, rename this, which is very strange. So at the moment, the logic is easy. If uh, the user who sent the command is the uh, channel owner. Um, then uh, it's allowed, so it's only me uh, who will be able to use this command for the time being. We don't have built in any roles or, or things like that because I don't have the Twitch API integrated at the moment, which is probably going to become more and more necessary. So I can, for example, check if someone is a moderator on the channel or uh, has a different role and um, allow them to use these commands as well. But for the time being, we'll keep it simple. So if the subcommand is add and the person is authorized, then um, we'll have to get the streamers. And now I'll have to duplicate functionality that's already built into the shoutout handler because um, I need to retrieve the last scene data and modify it by adding a new name and then uh, store it again. And so I'm starting to repeat stuff here which means that uh, we'll have to do some uh, design here, actually. What I need is going to be um, an object that manages this last scene data and uh, that we'll be able to use from both the shoutout handler and the uh, streamer command. So we can extract that stuff to a different class. Um, I'm still going to use the uh, 10x um, namespace here. I quite diligently named everything in here underscore handler. So now that we are uh, going to add other objects that aren't handlers, um, it'll still fit in. And uh, of course, Ex Exegetio asks the right question. What message I'm, am I going to send to the object? Well, I guess um, it's mostly going to be, um, in this case, if we're talking about streamers, um, the object needs to be able to add streamers to um, the remove streamers and to check if uh, uh, a name is among the list of streamers. The nice thing about um, extracting this functionality into an object 
is uh, that it, it will also completely encapsulate how it's implemented. Uh, at the moment, I'm using um, Redis as my backing store. And um, so I'm storing pure arrays or hashes uh, for the most part. And um, I'm also accessing um, fields in a hash manner. As you can see here, I retrieve the last scene data. And then I uh, more or less assume a um, hash uh, context where I uh, retrieve uh, the user key. Um, and uh, by encapsulating that in an uh, object to, uh, to which I simply, uh, or for which I, I simply use um, methods, uh, that'll then completely hide the implementation. So if I eventually decide to not store stuff as hashes in Redis, but as um, serialized objects in, in a database or something like that, in a, in a relational database, then um, uh, nothing will have to change except the uh, streamer class itself. So let's add a new class. Uh, we'll call it streamer. Do we, um, you know what? I'll introduce a new sub namespace named data to be able to keep tabs on things. So that's that. So that's going to be the streamer class. And we'll have to pass in a client. Oops. Uh, because the client is the interface that will provide us with the actually um, bot memory. So that's that. And we'll wrap everything in um, the existing namespaces, which is in this case 10 eggs. And uh, data. So that's that, and then we call end and end. And of course, we'll have to store the client information. So client equals client. That's not going to be an accessor. We'll only use that internally. And uh, now I can actually go back to my right uh, to my shout out handler and we'll extract last seen user update last scene and retrieve friends and stream a friend as well oops All that stuff here can go. We paste that here. Most of that stuff is actually going to be private. So what's going to be the public um, interface? So 
So Exegete um, said um, that's one of those things uh, Rubocop complains about what uh, he disagrees with. Uh, not combining your module definitions into a single line. Um, yeah, I, I get that. Um, that's actually why I'm, I'm distributing it, uh, because um, Rubocop kept complaining that I wrote 10x, double colon, data, double colon, streamer. On the other hand, um, it's a little bit more readable that way, and uh, so I'm fine with that. And, um, well, if you uh, aren't too happy about uh, how um, uh, Rubocop sees these things, you can always um, disable or modify that specific cop and uh, allow these uh, the, the single line syntax as well. So I'm fine with uh, writing it out in in uh, in this uh, block-like, in this uh, indented way. So let me see. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is... We'll need an... Still struggling with my keyboard layout. Uh, we'll need an uh, streamer A method with a username. Then we'll need uh, an add streamer or even add, simply add, should be enough because the context is clear. I did not go back to Dwork, I, uh, but I went back to Colmac, yeah. Um, uh, I decided to uh, give my brain a little uh, an additional jog by actually switching to Colmac layout for my split keyboards. For my normal staggered QWERTY keyboards, I'm still <laughs> going to use QWERTY, um, but my orthogonal, uh, ortholinear um, split keyboards are going to be in Colmac only, and it works quite well. I'm getting better week by week, but um, I think I've, I've talked about this quite a few times on the stream already. Um, when I can focus on, on, on writing, um, then it, it works much better than when I do live streaming where I have my mind all over the place, L looking at chat, looking at my code, talking um, all over the place. Um, these things seem to uh, uh, severely deteriorate my my typing ability on this new layout because my brain can't focus on, on the single thing. But yeah, uh, Hopefully um, it'll get better over time and it'll um, keep uh, other conditions like uh, Alzheimer's at bay. I'm definitely not as frustrated th uh, as when I, uh, when I tried it first, when I actually gave up on it. It's not that I can't type while you're watching, it's uh, that I can't type while I'm speaking. So let's add a user. And then of course, we'll also need to um, remove a user. Does my microphone pick that up? Uh, the noise gate seems to cover most of it. I'm quite amazed that the ice cream truck is actually playing the A-Team theme because uh, that's uh, definitely uh, not their target audience. So that's that. And everything from here, I guess, is going to be private. A retrieve data, store... Uh, last seen... Wait, what am, am I doing? That's last seen. 
Um, that's going to be a different uh, object. Yeah, okay. I definitely need... Uh... Definitely need another object here. Uh, well, full of snobble, um, I wouldn't be as general that uh, Twitch chat hurts the cognitive ability of streamers. It's just that my chat definitely uh, hurts my cognitive abilities. So, um, yeah, I guess that uh, calls for another class here, uh, which is last scene. So we are going to, hmm, is it worth copying stuff? Oh, well, I guess at least that part here can be copied. So that's going to be last scene. Again, we need a client and uh, in this case, Uh, the uh, method that we need is simply last scene for user. And then we'll say what how, how are we going to call our our messages let's see I mean I almost called this the the next method touch because um, that's the command that you use on the file system um, to update the timestamp of a file but touch user does not sound right so um, uh, for the time being I'll call it update uh, last scene for well, this user I still don't know why my indentation is broken. So everything else is going to be private again. These two messages should um, be sufficient. So let's go back to my streamer command and here we need to rip out these methods and we'll add them here as private oh dear scene exclamation mark is a nice idea I like that. So what my what's my opinion on format on save? Uh, 
I'm a moderate in 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 this regard because uh, I do have my editor strip white space and uh, yeah most it's mostly white space um, on save. So for example, if I leave uh, um, a new line down here and I save, uh, it'll be automatically removed. But I don't yet, uh, at least, um, adhere to the, the fraction or um, yeah, that uh, actually lets something like Prettier or Rubocop completely reformat their code. Um, I'm, and I think in my case that's actually more of a uh, technical limitation. Just a second. Um, because I, I haven't got that uh, working in NeoVim yet. Uh, since I'm pretty much a, a Rubocop um, disciple, uh, I, I think I wouldn't mind Rubocop reformatting my, my code because um, there wouldn't be much to reformat anyway. Um, and it would make things easier, for example, if I forget an end or so, that'll be become obvious then when everything gets reformatted um, automatically. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, I'm not missing that feature enough that I have actually spent time on getting it working in my editor. So I guess for the time being, um, I'd like to have a little bit of a cleanup on save, but not a complete reformat. Okay, so um, let's implement last scene and uh, the scene exclamation mark scene bang and uh, that's actually pretty easy because we'll say last scene equals retrieve last scene oh dear retrieve last scene data and then we'll simply return last scene um in this case, uh, we are still using the hash context, so we'll simply return last scene user. And if we want to update last scene, well, that's uh, what we have down here. So I'll grab that and put it here. Last scene data. Well, let's let's use last scene data here. Now I'm not trusting the rename feature anymore. Last in data retrieve last in data, then we'll check, uh, oh, no, we'll set last in data for this particular user's time now, and then we write it back. So, yeah, that's that. And that's also already implemented up there. Okay, so. That's what I meant by encapsulating stuff. These two uh, methods here that retrieve and store my last scene information. Um, it's completely hidden that they use the client's backing store. And it's also hidden that they use a hash as a data structure. So uh, that's uh, very nice. And that will make it easier to um, write the shoutout handler because we can simply say here in shoutout cooldown um, we'll uh, say last wait last underscore scene equals uh, we can simply say data um, last scene dot new and we'll have to pass in our client and uh, then we'll say last scene type is last scene uh, last scene user uh, so maybe we need to rename this method as well. Any suggestions? Last scene 
Shall we simply name it time so I can write last scene dot time? It's better than last scene dot last scene, isn't it? Something like this. Last scene time equals last scene dot time user, and then we'll decide. Okay, uh, is the cool cool is it is is, is this user still on cooldown or not? And uh, update last scene. Um, we'll call that start cooldown because that's um, in this context. Uh, So flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. Defcon 1. Oh dear. Welcome Raiders. Welcome. Happy to have you here. Welcome to Full Stack Live. Chat, use the exclamation mark attack and exclamation mark defend commands so we can defend against our raid. Hey, Star Ansible, how are you doing? How was your stream? Let's try and defend the channel. Rostakma, welcome to Fullstack Live. Thanks for the follow. It's a unit system. I know this. Kyle Wakes, happy to have you here. Hey, how is everyone? I'm um, building a uh, Twitch chatbot in Ruby. Uh, it's uh, the uh, chatbot that also provides us with the attack and defend commands here. And uh, my uh, focus is not on uh, functionality. The bot functionality for, for the time being is pretty simple. Um, it's uh, most of all about uh, Co clean code and uh, object-oriented design and things like that. Well, GLX, <laughs> uh, that's uh, probably because uh, I'm a German living in Ireland, so uh, that's where this uh, particular mix of accents comes from. <laughs> And infinite entropy, uh, that's definitely, I, I'll take that definitely as a compliment. Thank you very much. <laughs> Neochrome. Uh, Neochrome, yeah, um, I am uh, of the same opinion. I've been coding in Ruby now for 12 years. I started using Ruby uh, when I uh, started my company, which is a web hosting company. And back then I chose Chef as our infrastructure automation and uh, configuration management software. I did not really realize that uh, it'll get me into Ruby because uh, Chef pretty much builds a domain specific language based on Ruby uh, for its purposes. Uh, but um, pretty soon I, I realized that I can use Ruby to extend this specific DSL. And that's what got me into Ruby. And the more I did with it, the more I, I really liked the, the language, how its syntax works, how it's uh, thinking about objects and things like that. Um, about three years into running my hosting company, uh, it became clear that we also needed a customer dashboard that we couldn't keep um, forcing our customers to send uh, support tickets for each domain change they wanted to have. So uh, that's what got me into Ruby on Rails then. And um, uh, over time, um, um, my company is pretty much running based on Ruby with, with everything. Um, uh, we are also building internal tools for infrastructure automation in Ruby. Um, everything that isn't uh, that we can't solve with a three-line shell script uh, will be built with Ruby. So, yeah, um, I guess uh, the likelihood that you see something else uh, than Ruby besides the usual DevOps stuff like Kubernetes and things like that is pretty slim.
I uh, did uh, pretty much the the opposite. Um, uh, when I started my company, I came from a big uh, web hosting um, uh, corporation, and um, back there, uh, an, an apprentice actually introduced Puppet, uh, the uh, infrastructure automation software. Uh, it was definitely a step forward for us back then. Um, that was about 2007, eight, something like that. And um, I just didn't like that Puppet came with its own language. And then this language was also different to the language in which you wrote Puppet modules and things like that. So um, that's why I decided basically on a gut feeling to choose Chef as my own infrastructure automation software. And uh, we are still very happy with Chef 12 years in. Owen Coates, thank you so much for following and uh, Neil Cromer as well. Um, I'm really happy that you are here. I actually don't know uh, what DTK is. I don't think I've, I've read anything about this so far. Feel free to, to elaborate what DTK actually is. Infinite Entropy, thank you for following. I appreciate you all. DevOps Toolkit. Okay. Deprecated now. No, I don't think I, I ever heard of it. Uh, I'm sorry to say. Okay. Uh, was it more of a short-lived project then? Because um, normally I'm, I'm pretty uh, up-to-date in the DevOps space, but... Um, Maybe I just missed this particular thing. I've definitely uh, looked at Ansible. But it's basically the, the opposite from what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, with my uh, infrastructure automation, we are... Um, uh, deeply... Uh, deep into the um, imperative infrastructure and uh, configuration management and um, I'm not sure if Ansible would be uh, and it would, would be an improvement for us because uh, because of its declarative uh, approach we would probably have to write Ansible modules for all our custom stuff just so we could then turn these uh, custom modules into declarative statements in our YAML files. And I'm not sure this effort would be um, a good idea. Uh, we are, we have uh, enough technical debt as it is. Um, so I, um, uh, I think uh, Ansible is definitely a valid approach. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's not going to be something that we'll adopt anytime soon. Yeah, I, I see what you mean by uh, they had a little bit more money than you. Um, marketing, even in open source, maybe especially in open source, is a thing. Um, I think the all these vulnerabilities are a great example. Um, everyone knows what Heartbleed is, for example, and, and that's not because everyone is deeply into cybersecurity. Uh, but it's because of the branding. So, um, yeah, what have we been doing? I'm at the moment extracting functionality out of my bot handlers, which actually handle chat uh, messages and things like that into the, their own um, objects. So uh, this functionality is nicely encapsulated. So, for example, the class I'm working on at the moment, that's the shoutout handler. And um, uh, that is going to automate my streamer shoutouts. So, um, uh, just as in this case, this is the perfect example um, with your aid. I completely um, forgot about um, sending a shoutout uh, to Star Ansible, which I'm going to do now and uh, this shout out handler will be able to send this shout out automatically 
because um, I can add people to my list of streamers and once uh, one, uh, one person that is in this uh, list of streamers um, pops into chat, um, they'll get a shout out automatically from my bot. And uh, so uh, that will uh, hopefully um, mitigate my own shortcomings here. So um, I've already extracted this last scene functionality because um, of course we can't uh, send a shout out every time someone uh, posts a, a message in chat. Um, there needs to be some kind of a cooldown and uh, that's what this last scene functionality does. Um, we'll uh, check when we've last seen that particular person and um, if uh, we've never seen them before or if uh, the time we've last seen them uh, is longer than the cooldown period, so in this case um, an hour, um, we'll send a shout out. And then of course we'll have to start the cooldown uh, for this particular user. And that's going to be simply by getting another last scene object and then calling last scene scene exclamation mark for this particular user and that is that so i think um what this uh, handle does is now pretty easy to read um let's start at the beginning we have a shout out handler um this uh, handler registers a subscription to user messages which is all chat messages so once uh, anyone posts a chat message this handler gets um, called and when it's called it decides um is this person a streamer friend um if that's the case, um, it'll continue. If not, um, we are done. Um, and then we'll check if uh, they are on cooldown. And I guess we can get rid of that shout out. We'll simply say cooldown. Shout out is already the context we are in. It's the shout out handler. And uh, um, uh, after all, and um, if we are not on cooldown, then uh, we'll send a shout out and then we'll start the uh, cooldown again. Do we only start the cooldown when we send a shout out? Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, uh, if someone is uh, active in chat, um, the cooldown would start all over again and again and again, um, and the the hour um, would never end because it'll start over and over again. So uh, that's that, and that's the the public interface, and um, everything else is plumbing. Um, shout out sends a shout out text. I'll need to uh, refine that a little bit. And then we'll have the cooldown method that uh, checks if last scene is there or um, pretty old. And then we'll um, start the cooldown again where, because we'll update last scene. Now that I think about that out loud, and that's uh, the great effect of um, Using your stream chat as rubber ducks, uh, last scene is now not as generic anymore as it once was meant to be. Because now it's actually the shout out cooldown. Last scene in a more generic context would be when that person last posted a chat message. And uh, for the reason I just mentioned, we can't 
do that. We can't uh, uh, update last seen every time someone posts in chat. Otherwise, they'll actually have to be silent for an hour to get another shout out. And that's the last thing I'm going to do. Force my streamer friends to be silent just so they get a, a shout out after an hour. That's not what this, these shout outs are <laughs> supposed to do. Um, so I guess... doesn't make really much sense to extract that. Huh. Let me think that through. Am I on the right track here? Yeah, we're talking about a shout-out cooldown, regardless if that person kept chatting during the period. Um, so, rather than a last scene tracker, that's more a shout-out tracker, isn't it? However, from my experience with uh, chatbots, like uh, the one from Stream Elements, uh, there are going to be commands that need these kinds of cooldowns anyway. So I guess I could simply implement a cooldown mechanism. So we'll call that cooldown. we call it user cooldown because it's going to be user based and we can make this a constant so it'll be easier to uh, let's call it memory key That's going to be user underscore cooldown. And since it's user-based, we need to... generate a key. And we'll... make that easy... by... Um, I'm going to how am I going to call that? So what I'm going to do is that I'll basically say I'll pass in a user and a cooldown name. So something like that. Um, user and then we'll use something that uh, won't clash with uh, Twitch names. So for example, we'll use two colons as a as a separator and then we'll use the cooldown name uh, 
so how do we call this method? Um, that's the... Let's call it memory cell, for lack of a better word. So that's going to be a user and a cooldown. Both need to be provided. And then we'll say, okay, last seen data retrieve, last seen data. Memory cell for this particular user. And I guess we'll pass the cooldown name in as an argument with the constructor. If you ask yourself why I'm making so many typos, it's because I'm still getting used to the Colmac layout on my keyboard. A few weeks ago, I switched to Colmac to become more efficient uh, and to um, relieve a little bit of wrist pain that I was suffering from, and I've still I'm still struggling, especially uh, if I have to talk while I'm typing. So. Um, We'll retrieve, uh, yeah, memory cell is not what I'm going to stick with, but uh, I can't think of anything better at the moment. So instead of user, we'll use uh, memory cell or user, user and uh, cooldown. Well, we could actually We don't have to pass in cooldown everywhere. Because... Uh, we can simply use the instance variable here. So, um, that's that. We have a user cooldown. And we could use a an expired A method where we uh, pass in a user and a duration. Then we'll say, okay, last seen is last seen data for that particular user. And then we'll simply um, use this We need to rename this file. Um, and if last scene is nil, if is not nil, oh wait, um, the cooldown has expired. If last scene is nil, or last seen is greater than now minus 
duration. So I have an expire at A and a start exclamation mark. Oh, no, we don't need the exclamation mark, I guess. Uh, start method here as our public interface. Uh, here we retrieve last seen data and uh, set it as time now and store it back. And here we retrieve it and uh, check if it's either nil or um, if it's old, basically. And in both uh, cases, it the cooldown is regarded as expired. So um, let me go ahead and rename this file because that's now a user cooldown class. And in my shoutout handler, did things now get a little bit more readable? Let's see. Um, unless cooldown event user then shout it. Okay, so we'll get a cooldown by doing data user cooldown dot new and we'll pass in our chat client information that gives us all the uh, plumbing like um, the uh, backing store, which is based on Redis in this case, and we'll pass in the cooldown name, which we'll call shoutout. And uh, unless cooldown, no, in this case we need and if uh, unless cooldown expired for the for this particular user and uh, the cooldown period, which is private, yeah, that's okay. So that's the duration. If the cooldown has expired for this user, then we'll send a shout out and then we can simply go and cooldown start for this user. That's nice and readable. And we don't need all that stuff anymore, which is nice because um, now we really implement the single responsibility um, principle. This class only takes care of shoutouts. It checks, uh, well, we have to implement the streamer friend method, but uh, that'll be um, uh, extracted to the streamer class anyway. And um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's that. RJ asks what the uh, what kind of keyboard that is. That's a um, split ergonomic keyboard. It's called the Corn or the Helidox. Uh, it has two names. Um, it's uh, uh, called a forty percent keyboard because it um, gets rid of all the number rows and function key rows, and of course, it doesn't also have a um, it doesn't have a numpad either. Uh, everything is on layers, and these layers get triggered by these thumb keys. And um, I find this, uh, after a uh, period of familiarizing yourself with that, um, much more comfortable than typing on a normal staggered keyboard. Even though, as you can see, I still have lots of staggered keyboards as well. Um, I really do like um, mechanical keyboards, and I've built all of these myself. Um, but um, uh, in the end, um, my favorite keyboards are split keyboards like this one um, that allow me to easily type without moving my fingers more than one key to, uh, to any side.
I'm not sure if I... Uh, I probably have... Uh, deactivated the con keyboard command. Yeah, I did. But that's what the keyboard is, is called. I'm using tactile switches in this keyboard. I really like the, the, the tactile feedback if I have to go over some kind of a, a hump in terms of uh, pressure. And uh, it reminds me of the keyboard, keyboards of old. Speaking of keyboards of old, I have an order running for an actual new Model F keyboard, um, which is uh, the recreation of IBM's Model F keyboards from the 1980s, uh, using buckling spring switches, which aren't exactly quiet switches. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to get this keyboard uh, later this summer, I guess, or some sometime around fall. It's going to be a staggered keyboard. Uh, I, I'll have to live with that. But um, I'm really looking forward to typing on uh, that kind of keyboard again, because it really reminds me of times back in the um, late 80s, early 90s, when I did internships and, and summer uh, jobs where I had to type in um, uh, invoice data or uh, work in, in, a, in a warehouse and uh, use one of these IBM terminals connected to a mainframe somewhere in, uh, in, in a different building. Uh, the keyboard that I'm talking about is uh, the new Model F. Um, I'm afraid that uh, it's going to be an expensive prank um, because uh, new Model F keyboard. So these keyboards are built like the original IBM keyboards of old. Some of you might be familiar with the IBM Model M, um, which is the uh, successor of the Model F. And you can still buy new Model M keyboards um, from companies like Unicomp. And of course, you can get Model M keyboards from eBay, but uh, they're getting more expensive by the day. And... Um, these keyboards here are built after the Model F, the predecessor of the Model M. Um, there's a guy uh, who calls himself Ellipse on the uh, keyboard, in, inside the keyboard community. And uh, what he did was actually re-engineer everything and uh, get factories, build all these things um, new with the old design. So these are brand new keyboards um, with uh, steel cases and uh, original design, buckling springs, uh, switches and things like that. Um, but they are factory new. And uh, so uh, you really get something. But as you can see, uh, it's not uh, cheap to, to rebuild these tanks. On the other hand, um, I guess... Uh, if your, if your house doesn't burn down, you'll probably be using these keyboards for decades. Hey, Roddy Digital. Nice to have you here. Um, main annoyance you had with your Model M was no super key. Yeah, there, there are. Um, yeah, the, the old um, uh, original IBM uh, Model Ms don't have a, a Windows or a super key. Um, the newer models you can get from Unicomp, for, ex for example, they do have... Um, uh, uh, super keys. Uh, Unicomp actually even builds um, Model M keyboards with a Mac layout where you actually have a command key and an, an option key even. Uh, I had one of these earlier, but, but uh, because I, I left uh, uh, Macs behind for in the end for Linux, um, I gave that keyboard to my colleague.
And that's another similarity, Exegetio. Uh, my wife is exactly the same. Um, I gave her my old Logitech 810 keyboards, which, which I really loved back in the time. Uh, it already had three different Bluetooth channels and, and all these things, backlighting built in. And she refuses to, to use anything else, even though there are lots of superior keyboards in this house uh she she's not going to to use any of these i i try to get her to use a mechanical keyboard but no she likes her chiclet keys and uh that's it and uh i'm uh not enough of a zealot to to try and convince her otherwise Yeah, I, I guess uh, if she, I'm, I'm not sure if you would insist on on using a, a MacBook uh, with the old uh, what was this the the butterfly keyboard, butterfly switches. Uh, that's n that wasn't a, a good time for for Apple keyboards. Okay, so um, yeah, let's get back to our shout out handler here. Yeah, butterfly. I think butterfly is the mechanism. No, uh, it's. There's a difference between scissor mechanism and uh, butterfly me mechanism, isn't there? Since they are not mechanical keyboards, I'm actually not really sure how these work, but um, yeah, I actually don't care either. <laughs> 355 one time, uh, mind you, not a uh, monthly rent or something, simply one time, a one time expense of three, 355 bucks and you have an office to your own. So yeah, that might be actually worth uh, the investment. That's actually an investment because it'll uh, uh, pay back. Okay, so um, where are we? Uh, I think this, this cooldown thingy here is pretty much uh, built out. We get the cool cooldown object. If it has expired, uh, we'll give a shout out and then we'll start the cooldown again. And that's that. That's nicely done. Um, and then we'll have to build the streamer friend. Um, a method here. So let's go and build that. Streamer friend A for a specific user. And in this case, we'll have to use the streamer data object. And we could simply rebuild the exists method here and then add and remove so retrieve strange enough um, I seem to have lost a little bit of functionality here but uh, It'll be easy to recreate that. So we'll use another constant named memory key here. By the way, that's uh, one of the things I, I love these custom mechanical keyboards for. Um, I can actually... Um, so uh, the, the secret why they are so great is uh, they use an open source firmware um, called QMK that you can program yourself. Uh, you can extend it using C code. And uh, I did exactly that and um, built an enhanced caps lock functionality that I can um, simply uh, enable with a key press, as you can with caps lock as well. But in this case, uh, I can type uh, my uppercase um, characters. And if I press the space bar, um, it'll turn into an underscore. And... Uh, only when I press escape or I toggle the caps lock, then it'll return to 
normal mode. And um, so uh, it's easy to write these uppercase constant names by simply typing space instead of underscore. And it's, it's little things like that that make these custom mechanical keyboards um, a, a joy to use. So in this case, um, I'll call my memory key streamer friends. Well, we can basically steal that from down here. And um, yeah, we'll use a memory key. Retrieve friends. The uh, exists function is this, and then we'll have to have a store friends. Store underscore friends low level. Functionality, I guess we'll pass in a friends hash. And here we need to then use client memory store. And uh, yeah, I guess it's a memory key. Friends, right? How did we do that with the uh, user cooldown? Yeah, memory key and the data. Okay. So for exist, we retrieve friends and check if there is a key with this username. For add, we'll do friends equals retrieve friends. And then we'll say friends user equals true. And then we'll store friends. And for remove, we'll do the same, and we'll simply set this to false. You could also try and remove that, um, would have the same effect, I guess. No, it wouldn't. Uh, if we check if there's a key for this user, we can't use false. We need to actually delete um, this key from uh, our hash. XG draw to caps as control escape is one of my favorite bits of the Ergodox Moonlander too. Yeah, they have QMK firmware as well. And that's why I actually carry uh, a mechanical keyboard even if I'm uh, out and about. Um, I have a, a little um, keyboardio atrius uh, that uh, is still pretty handy. I have it here, actually. It's uh, in this nice little bag. If you open the bag, it comes out uh, automatically. And uh, it's also a little bit split, has thumb keys. It's pretty light. It's not in a in a in an alu case, so it's just a plastic case that's easy to carry, and uh, that spares me from having to deal with terrible laptop keyboards. And I get a little bit exercise in the process. Okay, so um, how do we delete a hash key? That's actually a question I haven't asked in a while. And that's someone who's uh, planning on, on uh, uh, offering a Ruby course. I don't even know by memory how to delete a hash key. I guess it's a delete method, isn't there? Ruby 
Hash delete. Yeah, that's a delete function, huh? Where's the R actual Ruby? Here, class hash. Delete. Deletes the entry for the given key and returns its associated value. I'm not interested in the value, but uh, it'll do what I want to do. So we'll do uh, friends dot uh, delete and this needs to go from this to this. And then we'll store our friends again. And that's that. So we have a exists method that we can use from our um, shoutout handler. Here's the shoutout handler. We need to create an object. Uh, we'll call it streamers equals data streamer dot new and then uh, we'll say streamers dot exist and then we'll use data user cooldown to do this and that should do the trick Uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, experiencing that myself. Ruby Doc um, was among the first search results uh, in in the past, and uh, now it's uh, going further and further to the bottom. So yeah, um, that's that. I guess from here we can actually go ahead and. Um, implement the streamer command oof ah that's where all my code went wasn't it oh no that's uh copied from the plan command okay so let's see if this is a command and it includes the aliases then handle command yep handle command in my case is either add uh if authorized uh, we'll need to do something, otherwise we'll send permission denied, okay, else, uh, there is not, go not going to be an else, really, um, we'll have just uh, three commands, no, two commands, add and delete, so I guess we could basically say... Else if subcommand rm if also authorized and in this case so um, if we add a streamer we'll uh, say user equals rx shift and then we'll have to create new streamers object streamers new streamers add user boom vroom shroom that's an amazing twitch name hey eh? How are you doing? Welcome to Full Stack Live. Yeah, um, it does have this uh, question mark. The, the question mark is valid syntax, and uh, it's commonly used to denote uh, Boolean um, return values. And uh, as Exegete says, uh, it's just by convention. There's nothing that keeps you from using it in other contexts as well, but that's uh, how it's used 99% of the time. And the same is with the exclamation mark. Uh, that's most of time um, used, as uh, Exegete say, says, to represent committed changes, which means if you are making 
uh, changes to an existing object instead of um, returning a uh, modified version of the object, it modifies the object itself. Um, so I could use the exclamation mark here with add because uh, I actually uh, modify the streamer's object, but uh, it feels a little bit redundant in this in this case, so I'm, I'm not going to use it here. So I guess uh, more or less the same functionality goes for the rm command and we'll just uh, remove our user from our streamers list. Uh, update plan and announce plan are unnecessary and uh, I wonder why this end here is white. Uh, let me see. Is there a problem with uh, nesting? Yes, there is. Okay. That looks pretty much... Um Interesting question, Exegete. Um, does the exclamation mark denote side effects, like in functional programming? Mm, let's take a look at uh, the actual hash implementation or hash API here, because we do have a few of these exclamation mark. Uh, commands in here, I assume. Here, for example, we do have a filter or select. Um, wait. Yeah. Filter is an alias for select. Uh, that's So we have select, which uh, returns a new hash. But there's also a select exclamation mark, a select bang uh, method that actually um, modifies the original um, hash in this case. And there are array methods as well that have the same. Um, the uh, bangless uh, method returns a new hash, which ha is modified from the original. And the bang method um, returns the original um object in a modified uh, state. So I wouldn't call that a side effect because that's actually the intended effect if you actually want to force modifications on the original object. And uh, it's a good thing you can see that from the command invocation here, that you really can see, okay, select um, basically filters out, um, in this case, hash Pair, uh, val key value pairs in the original and uh, you are going to lose data that way. And thanks for following RJ and uh, boom vroom shroom. Glad to have you here. So, uh, I've written a lot of code, even though it's not too complex, but uh, I really feel bad because I haven't written tests. Let me see. I did actually write a test for the shoutout handler. And uh, since everything we did was basically extract functionality into um, additional objects, this test should still work. I hope. Except uh, these tests do rely on um, internal knowledge about our backing stores. And I guess we can actually make this a little bit better. I, I did feel 
good in the first place when I started modifying the backing store for Streamer Friends and Last Scene here, um, because that's pure implementation and um, ideally your tests don't know anything about implementation. We do need to know a little bit about implementation though, but this time uh, it's going to be encapsulated in our newly created objects and um, that's a good thing. So I'll actually say instead of um, directly modifying the streamer friends database record here, we'll say um, I guess we'll have to use the full namespace, so 10x uh colon colon data streamer dot new dot add user friend and that way we don't yet we don't uh, have to know anymore where this is stored, how this is stored, and under which uh, name this is stored. We simply say, okay, store friend as a streamer, and we'll do the same for the cooldown. Ah, we can't, <laughs> we don't have an interface to modify a cooldown. We can't, can only start it, but uh, that will only help us with the te uh, tests that test... Uh, well, the cooldown. Um, we can't test the original case, though. Uh, we'll probably need something like cooldown reset as well, even if it's just used in tests. So... I guess we'll do a cooldown clear. This might be, uh, be useful in the future as well as um, action functionality. We'll get last seen data and then we'll delete this part here. We'll delete this part. I still don't like memory cell. We'll have to think of a better name here. Um, and then we'll store it. So yeah, we, we'll have a cooldown clear. We'll have to pass in the client though to our objects as well. So I guess that's here. Um, client, we already created the client a few lines above. And then we can add friend. And now we'll do the same for the cooldown. 10x data uh, user cooldown new. Client is going to be client and the cooldown is going to be shout out and we'll call clear for our user friend That way we don't have to deal with uh, this. Uh, does clear simply take the username? Yeah, it's not uh, named arguments here. Okay, and then we can use reuse this in uh, our tests below. Here we'll actually use 
use start instead of clear. And uh, for this final test here, we'll now make use of our remove method and uh, we'll remove our friend uh, even though we clear the cooldown if our friend sends a hello message it's not going to send a shout out what I also don't like is that uh, we have the actual shoutout message here in our tests because that's something that I'd like to modify more often than not. And uh, I really don't like having to update my, my tests for every modification to the shoutout message. So we'll have to find a better way eventually. But for the time being, that should do the trick. We have three test cases if we have a friend. So we add the friend and clear their cooldown. And if they send hello, they should receive a shout out. That's the, the happy path. If um, someone sends, um, is a friend, but sends a message even uh, while they are still on cooldown, they should not receive um, a message. And if uh, they are not on cooldown, but also are not a friend, um, then uh, they uh, should not receive a shout out either. So I guess we'll run um, our spec shout out handler spec. Oof, everything goes down the drain. Uh, Uninitialized constant 10x data. Ah, that's because we don't, unfortunately, we don't have an auto auto include like we do have in Rails. So in my 10x RB for the time being, well, let's write this first. So we'll do data slash uh, streamer. And then we'll do the same for user cool down still doesn't work undefined local variable or method client yep uh let's see i guess uh, that's the test that should be okay uh it's the actual shout out handler isn't it so here we have event client and we'll have to pass that in here client event client same here But that's not the file we're testing. I need to find the uh, shoutout handler. Uh, here we need to pass in this client. And here we actually pass it in already. So let's see. Um, 10, 10x data streamer.rb line 32. And that's uh, at client, okay. Still uh, same in user cooldown. Guess down here. Okay. 
Okay. And then uh, in shoutout handler. Um, the shoutout handler itself has a has access to client. It doesn't even have to be event client, I think. Does it? Undefined method uh, in line ten. That's exactly here. Okay. Wait, I'll have to look that up. So how do we do it in the plan command handler here? Event command, where's, where do we use client? Yeah, yeah, client is a method that we can use inside a, inside a handler. So that should be okay. Uh-huh. Now, undefined method exists for streamer. Uh, it needs to be named exists a. Uh, shout out handler line 11. Mm, and that's ex... Uh, where is it? Here. Okay, well, two green, one red. Uh, it did do a shout out, even though we just had started the cooldown. That's interesting. That's an interesting failure case. So, shout out to chatty friends. We create a new streamer. We'll start the shout out cooldown for friend. We okay. We pass in a user. Mm, I guess we'll modify our key here to cooldown user and then the name of the cooldown that way we have proper proper separation uh, if if uh, we are if everything happens in the user cooldown hash anyway Then it's okay. But, um, of course, uh, we are missing something here. And that's actually the extrapolation. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's why it didn't work. Let's see. Nope. Still didn't work. Um, let's see. Let's make a little bit of a debug output here. Uh, starting cooldown for the, this particular user. For user. Does this happen? 
Uh, yep, it says starting cooldown for user friend. Wait, this is... Why is this a, a pair? A key value pair. That's not what I'd expect. Uh, we can't start. User. I guess we can simplify this by make, not making it a named argument since it's only going to depend on the user and the cooldown is already known. So we can get rid of that. Um, but that's not the problem here. Uh, the problem is that I actually get a key value pair passed in here, start user. And uh, that's really strange. Why is that? I'm calling start friend and not user arrow friend or something like that. Uh, where's the shout out handler itself? Yeah, that doesn't happen. Now it says starting cooldown for friend, starting cooldown for friend, starting cooldown for friend. And it shouldn't happen twice. The first one is from the test setup. And then it does a shout out anyway. And part of the shout out is that it starts the cooldown again. So um, that's not what it's supposed to do. Why? Let's take a look at um, cooldown expired. So, last scene is empty, it does the shout out and starts the cooldown, so that's that uh, works well. In this case, wait, that's starting cooldown for friend last scene right now. It still does its a cool, uh, a shout out and then starts the cooldown. And uh, in the last case, they're not a friend, so uh, it, it'll uh, abort early and not start a cooldown or do anything. So this last scene here... ...should prevent us from starting, from doing a shoutout and starting the cooldown again, but it does not. Uh, we return last scene either nil or it's greater than time now minus duration and uh, 
What is duration? It's now, and duration is 3600, so an hour ago. So that should pretty much kill both of these. Last scene is definitely not nil, and it's definitely not greater than now. Well, it, of course it is greater than now minus duration. That's that, that's wrong. How uh, how does this need to be? Uh, last scene. needs to be lesser than time now minus duration yeah i forgot to to uh, switch the operator around when i uh, inverted this whole expression okay let's see if this works yeah it does good so even though we haven't tested our internal implementation objects here, um, the uh, main functionality still works, or finally works. Yep, that's nice if we run all the tests. I hope they're all green. Yep, they are. What we haven't built yet is the um, add command. Or the we haven't um, tested the uh, streamer command handler. But that should be pretty easy. I guess it's, the, it's pretty much the same as with the plan command handler. So I'll copy the first test here. And that's the streamer command spec. No, it's streamer command handler spec. And we'll need a frozen thingy here. And that's the streamer command handler it adds a streamer so we'll create streamer add friend from user tester we create a new Oh, okay. Mm. How does this work with the owner? The bot name is test and the client is test channel and it needs to come from test channel. Okay. So uh, bot name is test but the user is test channel we call streamer add friend we send this message we I guess we'll remove a friend from from our list uh, so that's something I can steal from the Shout out handler test. Mm, why do we? We don't have to manipulate their cooldown. We just have to remove them from our list. Just to be sure. Then we'll call the handler 
with our streamer at friend message. And then we'll uh, back. We'll uh, reach. Can we do expect ten x data? No, 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 no. We, that, that's going to be co too complicated. Uh, we do mm. uh, this feels strange but uh yeah hey kind of classic Welcome to Full Stack Life. Uh, we'll call 10x data streamer. Wait, we can we can reuse this this uh, object up here, can't we? Um, so let's say. We call this streamers equals 10x data streamer new something something. Here we'll say streamers remove friend, and then uh, we can expect streamers uh, exists a. friend to wait be true that's how streamers works right let's go back we can call them with a username and it'll return if they're if they exist and since it always retrieves friends from of a new we don't have any uh chronological issues here we remove them we send the message which should then uh, result in um them getting added so streamers exist friend should work let's see if this does work well, sorry about that. The the keyboard command um, is disabled because um, I didn't want to have to update it, and it uh, every time I switch my keyboards, of which I have a lot, as you can see. So um, that keyboard is a uh, Helidox, also known as a Corn, um, in a nice um, aluminium case from IMK, using Boba U40 tactile switches with uh, cat cyberspace keycaps so uh i guess our shout out handler oh look at that the the uh shout out command handler doesn't run oh it does but it fails spectacularly okay why does it um, syntax error. Streamer command handler spec. Unexpected end of input. Expecting end. So something is... N oh, of course. Okay. This fails. Mm. Uninitialized constant 10x streamer command handler. Is it not? Streamer command handler. Oh, I haven't included that yet. So I'll add that here. Oops.
Oh, still doesn't work. Uh, 10x data streamers. Yep, that's wrong in uh, the streamer command handler. Um, it's not streamers, it's streamer. Should be named streamers though. Yeah, should be named streamers. So we we will rename that. We will rename that. We'll have to rename that. Guess you it should also be named user cooldowns then. Yeah, let's do it. That's that. Um, and then there are a few places where we need to fix that then. So the shout out handler. Is one place, then the streamer command handler. That's one thing, and then we'll have to update our tests in a few places. It's streamers, cooldowns. And the other spec is the streamer command handler spec. Yep. And here it's just one instance. Nope, oh, broken everything for the shoutout handler spec. User cooldowns. Mm -hmm. And now it's the streamer command handler where we don't have a client. That's strange. Streamer command handler line 27. Streamer command handler here. Data streamers new client. Yeah, there is no event client. It's simply called client. Okay. Uh, to be true. Okay. 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 Uh, so that's the streamer command handler spec. Not to be underscore true, but to be actually true. That worked. <laughs> Roddy Digital asks, can you not use the fancy firmware on your keyboards to force an update to the variable storing your keyboard model when it's plugged in? Uh, unfortunately, there's no way um, to... Um, really do communication with the... Uh, host machine other than uh, what the USB protocol allows. That's one of the limitations um, this firmware has. It's simply that the USB um, HID spec doesn't allow any communication other than sending key codes. I could, of course, um, 
for example, um, program a macro in my keyboard that I press a certain key and uh, it'll then um, output text, which I could uh, have it output directly into chat. That would be one um, option, but um, I'm not a fan of um, storing macros, text macros in my keyboard because unfortunately for most of these um, embedded uh, microcontrollers, um, they are really, really uh, low on memory. And my firm firmware, especially if it has fancy lighting and things like that, um, takes almost all of the all of the memory. So um, I can actually show you. Uh, I don't have uh, QMK in here yet, so let's go there. And uh, if I compile my Corn firmware here, which is also called called CRKBD. That's the third name. It's Helidox, Corn, and uh, CRKBD. So let me uh, get that CRKBD. And if I do a compile for my particular firmware, uh, it already. Um, outputs a warning here uh, the size is approaching the maximum i have 28 kilobytes is that it yeah it can't be megabytes so i guess it's uh, 28 kilobytes um that i can use for my firmware and of these 28 i use 27 um so um i can't store many more text strings or things like that As you can see, the, the memory is severely limited and the USB spec doesn't allow fancy communication between the keyboard and, and the uh, host. Let's go back to our chatbot. So, uh, everything works. Uh, I guess we'll have to add a test case for the removal as well. That's basically just the opposite. It removes a streamer. So we'll use RM here. We'll add our friend. And then we'll call our chat message. And then uh, we'll expect that to be false. And that works as well. Which means we are basically done. And uh, yeah, I'm 20 minutes over my allotted time, but um, at least we got some results. So let's commit that stuff. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's all nice and good. Let's add everything. Uh, that's a feature. Um, add streamer command to and uh, with alt enter I can. Nope, that doesn't work. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that gets caught by the window manager, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, flow term with LazyGit is absolutely brilliant. I have tried NeoGit Neo uh, uh, for a little bit, but um, it seemed a little bit... Yeah, so... Uh, I have to explain. Um, up until I started using uh, LazyGit only a few weeks ago, I always used git from the command line. I have lots of git aliases and, and things like that, and shell aliases as well, so um, I did pretty well. But then I discovered lazy git and it's just too cool to not use. Um, and um, so uh, I got used to that pretty quickly. And um, so there wasn't much motivation left to explore NeoGit, to be honest. I would, I simply don't know what it would give me on top of uh, what uh, LazyGit and the Git command line already uh, are giving me. 
So yeah, I didn't. I simply didn't want to spend the time exploring NeoGit. If you think um, it'll be worth it, um, I'll give it another look. So, uh, with that committed, um, well, let's uh, push it. And that should automatically trigger a deployment, I think, if my integration with Heroku is working again. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'll do that off screen. Heroku.com. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Need to touch my Yubi key. Did it already deploy? Yes, it did. 10x has uh, already returned with its ready command. So, let me see. Um, so, if I do streamer add star Ansible. Well, it doesn't send me any confirmation. Confirmation. I can't, can't talk anymore. I haven't built in any confirmation message, so um, I, I actually don't know if it worked until Star Ansible returns and types something. But uh, we can give it a try, and uh, since we are at it, let's add XGTIO as well. Oh, no, that, that's not going to work. I missed the add. Streamer add exegeet IO. And uh, I guess eventually we'll see if this works or not. Mm. I guess from my tests, it's very likely it'll, go, it'll work, but uh, I'm not very sure. Exegete, if you're still around, simply go ahead and type something. I don't have access to it at the moment. Um, I guess I should build some interactive debugging possibilities into the bot, so I can actually um, send specific debugging commands like... Uh, test streamer or something like that that's actually yeah now that we are um, adding more functionality to the bot i guess uh, being able to communicate um, with the bot as a maintainer or super user becomes more interesting up until now i only had the attack and defend commands for raids um, which didn't need much testing um, because you can simply uh, enter them anytime you want and um uh, the plan command where I can add uh, my plan for today's stream and uh, that's easy to test with the exclamation mark plan uh, command as well which isn't up to date at the moment but uh, it'll still work so I can actually do plan is it add? no it's set um, today I'm going to work on my chat bot that's that and it actually sends me a, a confirmation message in this case i should do that for for the streamer command as well and uh, if i then enter plan and you can do that as well so then you'll get this uh, plan back so um 
that command didn't require any debugging information or things like that. But um, since uh, the streamer command combined with the shoutout handler doesn't have immediate effect, um, we'll have to see if it works. But uh, I'll go ahead and add a few uh, streamer colleagues to my list. And uh, I guess uh, we'll pretty soon see if, if that works or not. All right. Yeah, as I said, I'm already half an hour over my allotted time, so it's time to call it a day. Actually, um, I've been sitting for quite a while today. It's already half past four in the afternoon here in Ireland. So it's time to wrap up things. Um, and uh, you can do that by uh, answering questions or if there's anything that you'd like to share or if there's any feedback you have. Um, I'm very open to feedback and I'm always trying to improve. So if there's anything you think I could do better or if there's anything you'd like to uh, um you'd like to ask uh go ahead i still have a few minutes and i have actually quite a lot of tea to drink boom vroom shroom great stream thank you thank you thank you greetings back to the north um i'm based in bray so um we're not too far from each other All right, so folks, um, at the end, um, I'm always um, plugging my um, community platform. I'm in the process of building a community platform for DevOps people where we can um, um, ask and answer questions outside of the stream. It's based on uh, forum software, on the forum approach, so it's uh, asynchronous. I uh, have a remote a distributed company and we try to be as asynchronous as possible and that's why I'm trying to apply the same approach to um, my community as well. Even though we do have a Discord server too, um, I like things to be a little bit more persistent. persistent. Um, and not scroll away all um, uh, within within minutes. So uh, that's why I chose a forum-based community. Um, it, it's combined with my future course platform. I'm planning on creating different kinds of courses in the DevOps space. Um, there will eventually be a Ruby course as well. I uh, Back in my past, I worked as a Linux trainer, so I did a lot of system administration courses. I wrote a book on Perl programming and gave courses with that. Um, and I definitely intend to do a, a Ruby course as well. But that's a lot of uh, effort. And uh, I, I'm not, I don't think um, I'll finish the course material for a Ruby course um, by the end of this year. So uh, in the meantime, I'm going to offer smaller courses. The first course that I'm... Um, trying to get out is going to be about Rails view components, which is pretty nifty to um, uh, get a little bit of structure into your Rails views. And um, there's more on that as well. Um, joining our community is free, of course. Um, there is, however, also a paid membership, and that's um, a nice alternative to Twitch subscriptions and uh, a Patreon uh, server, for example, um, because um, it'll support me and what I'm doing. So if you enjoy that, uh, feel free to get a paid membership. Uh, it'll get you exclusive content as well. So it's uh, a bit more of a two-way relationship that way. Um, if you'd like to get hold of me outside of streams, you can do so on Twitter and on Mastodon as well. And um, of course, I'll be back uh, on Friday afternoon, um, 2 p.m. Irish time, with uh, more Ruby goodness. And uh, that's going to be it for today. I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks again for the raid, Star Ansible, and for everyone who came by and stayed and followed. Uh, I really enjoyed everything and um, I'm pretty happy about what we accomplished today. So I hope to see you soon and until then, take care. <laughs>